What's up, besties? It's your girl Morgan here, and you're listening to Your Internet Best Friend. What's up, my beautiful besties out there? Okay, so today I'm joined by a special guest for a little mini episode because I wanted to do what I do the Lord's work, and I wanted to give y'all a little extra something because I felt like you just need a little bit more Morgan in your life. So I was talking to my manager being like, who should I bring on? Give me some good guests. She actually reminded me that someone that is also her client came from LA also to Nashville. She was here. She's going to join me. This girl who is joining me has millions of followers. She's an actress. She's a singer. She's a songwriter, all of the things. She's got 4 million TikTok followers. She's also 19. So We are going to be chatting today with Jenna Davis. If you watch Disney Channel, you may recognize her. If you're a horror fan, she voices Megan in the new horror movie, which I have not seen yet, but it got 93% on Rotten Tomatoes, so it's apparently amazing. She's also big on YouTube, and she's going to give me the tea on everything social media, what it's like to have the voice of an angel, and what it's like to grow up essentially in the spotlight. So y'all buckle up. It's going to be a fun one in my living room coming to you live i'm joined with the adorable the amazing jenna davis <laughs> hi guys yay <laughs> thank you so much for coming to Thanks hang for with having me. me i'm so so excited i have so many questions for you but first right. i want to start off i also dabble in social media not yes. not as as big as you but <laughs> how did you get started like how did this all come about Yeah, so it actually started with my mom and I doing singing covers in my parking garage in my apartment. Wait, okay, I did not know this, and I did a a deep dive on on your social media. Okay, so mom can sing too. Yes, my mom was a piano and voice teacher, so singing has been in my life, literally, I think since the womb. Oh my god. What was the, do you remember the first cover you guys did together? Yes, it was Hello and the Adele song. Okay, amazing. Adele's so hello. that, so we filmed this. Um, how old were you when you started doing I this? I believe I was around 11. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. So 11 year old you said, we're going to, we're going to sing together. We're going to put it on the internet and did it, did it blow up or is it just something you like doing? So it was really just me okay. and my mom was filming okay. and my mom had this idea that we're going to do three to four covers a week. Okay. So I give a lot of credit to my mom without her. I would not have the social media presence that I do today. Shout out moms. Yeah, shout we out love to my them. mama. <laughs> so we started doing those and it would be random trending songs, also some country songs, also some musical theater songs, really whatever we were feeling. Okay. And I would put the karaoke track on. My mom would have her little iPhone and we'd stand in the parking garage and sing. So a lot of the times people are now doing parking garage covers. And my mom and I kind of chuckle at ourselves because a couple years ago, that's what I'm sitting we started with doing. the creator of the parking <laughs> lot nah, karaoke. Nah. Oh, my God. Um, OK, so we started just YouTube then. That was like the first. No, Instagram. Really? OK. Yes. OK. So we just uploaded on Instagram. And then did you notice a following start to build? Or did it happen overnight? No, it did, definitely did not happen overnight. Okay. I think consistency was key for me personally. And over time, it just kept on growing. It took a, a very long time, but I kept on getting really great viewership and okay. engagement. And I think the thing about my covers is I always would look directly into the camera. A lot of singers, they tend to sing to themselves and close their eyes, which is, you know, each singer is their own. But for me, I would always look in the eyes of the camera. And a lot of the comments I would receive are, you're staring into my soul. But when I think about music, it's all about connection and what you're sharing with the audience. And I think that was one of the main reasons that I attracted an audience so quickly is because I was having that weird connection connection, with them and I was goofy and silly and I wasn't afraid. Like I was a dork and I will fully, fully say that, but it was so fun. (laughs) Trust me. Let me pull up my middle school photos. You'd be like, wow, (laughs) train wreck. So I think that's. What separated me is because I just wasn't afraid. Like I was a teenager that wasn't afraid of being like super dorky and being myself. And I think that, yes, caused a lot of haters and memes and things down the line. But it also separated me from the other creators in the platform at the time. Absolutely. So when you say that, like hate comments and memes and all that, like I still like it still can bother me and trigger me and be I'd be like, why are people so mean? 
you're also 19. I cannot fathom when starting at 11, you're now 19. You have 2 million followers on Instagram. How do you cope with what comes with, with that? How do you deal with hateful comments and stuff like that? Sure. I mean, I think, again, I'd give it to my mom for that. During the time, I I have been two memes in my lifetime that went viral and that still to this day come back and are always on my, my okay. platforms. And with that, I think that was the most hate I've ever received. But I also gained 200,000 on Instagram because of that meme. So it was a blessing and a curse. And during that time, it was hate comments nonstop. And my mom refused to let me have my phone. Smart. And look at those. She was like, this is not okay. I mean, absolutely. if you're getting told to kill yourself and different things like that at, I don't know, I think it was 13, 14 years old, no one needs to see that. And it's, you know, just disgusting. And my mom really made sure that I never got to see any of those type of things. And if I did, she would delete, she would block. And I think at the time, my mama bear came out at that time. Yeah, because absolutely. I think if I wouldn't have had her, it would have probably affected me a lot more than it did. But I also think now haters are lovers in disguise. And Mm. I think that's my biggest thing that I've learned throughout the years is, you know, if they are paying attention to you, for instance, there's this one guy on my Snapchat stories. I post Snapchat content throughout the day and he always comments something negative every single day Mm -hmm. on every single thing that I post. He'll come up with something random, but that's an extra viewer and that's an extra person that they're actually helping. Like they're actually helping you in the long run because the more viewers, the more engagement and then brand deals. And you know, like it actually is only helping you. So for people who are having to say anything negative, thank you because you're actually helping me. (laughs) You're paying my bills somehow. (laughs) Thank you for that. Well, and also, and I, I don't know if you also agree with this for me, changing your mindset of like, if they're spending their time being hateful to a random person on the internet Mm. that they don't know, it says more about them than it does about what they're saying to me because Like they're obviously very unhappy. So my favorite thing, my response to the trolls is like, if I'm feeling very petty and sometimes I do respond, it just like gets to me. I'll just be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. You're having such a bad day. Like I'm saying a prayer for you. Like I hope your day gets a little bit better. And nine times out of 10, they will respond back to me and they'll actually end up saying sorry. Because I feel like the only thing they want is a response. And when they don't get a response of you clapping back, or you want to continue mm. the argument or you want to give them more of a voice and you're kind of just like, thanks. You know what? Like, I hope you have a better day. Yeah. I see you for what it actually is, which is just like a negative troll. Then it's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, do you ever get people, which I don't know, I'm assuming you probably don't respond like to the negative ones. I do occasionally out of, I don't know, kind of, I guess out of yep. pettiness a yeah. bit. <laughs> But what I've noticed is most of the time they don't put the blame on themselves. They blame it on a sibling or a brother. Mm. Or it's like, oh my God, my boyfriend like was so mean to me My today. boyfriend's cat's grandma put that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like the craziest. I've had people blame it on other people. They're like, someone grabbed my phone and like that wasn't me saying that. And I'm like, you. I was not born yesterday. Like I'm actually very yeah. aware that it was you. Mm. But it's wild what people will come up with the second yeah. they feel seen. But for me, it just, it baffles me that... Like, would you ever in your a million years just randomly message someone that you don't know and just be like, oh, my God, go kill yourself? No, never, never in my I can't even fathom that. Truthfully, I get weirded out messaging like a celebrity. I'm like, oh, my God, like they don't know me. Like even I'm like, hey, girl, love your top. I'm like, oh, my God, like what what am I doing right now? I mean, I even get embarrassed when I like stub my toe or step on somebody else's toe. Yeah. So I can't, it, I can't it is really a, imagine it. It's a wild world we live in. So with this, mm. you, you're you on, you do YouTube, what, yes. three, how many subscribers on YouTube? Uh, 2.2 million. 2.2 million, 2 million on Instagram, <laughs> like crazy TikTok following. For you, I know, f- look, I'm... I'm just like a, a little a little Instagrammer on my 29 years of life, like starting a podcast, I love it. like I love it. getting by in life, like I'm doing pretty good for myself. I but for me, I get stressed out just looking at my phone sometimes, like the mm-hmm. notifications and trying to keep up with the trends and like everything. And that's with not even near like millions of people. So how do you cope with that? Do you what do you do for your mental health to deal with all of this? And you're only 19. Sure. I think consistency with social media is everything and it's finding the right balance I also think it's finding what to post and what not to post is also a really good balance and I think that comes with 
friendships and everything as well it's like how much do you put out there how much do you not put out there and I think that comes with time and you also learn that okay maybe I shouldn't have posted that or hey maybe maybe this is what I should post and I think to keep me grounded I have a very strong faith Mm -hmm. and I think that's what keeps me grounded and stable throughout the whole thing right but I really love what I do and I'm really passionate about all the things that I get to do and I'm very grateful for it so I think just the best thing that I can recommend to anybody that's wanting to start social media is kind of just go for it and Mm -hmm. be as consistent as you can. And then question for you, because a lot of people also ask me, they're like, okay, how do I get started? How do I even build a platform? Which I will say it's a little bit harder these days. I don't know if you've noticed that it's much, much more difficult to grow a following, but I'm always just like, you can't care what other people think like you really just have to show up and post so what what are like your top tips for someone who either wants to grow a business or they just want to show up and be themselves I think that's the hardest part for people on social media is simply being authentic and it sounds Mm -hmm. like it worked out very well for you because starting from 11 you've just stayed true to who you are and Mm -hmm. look at what you've done now so like do you have any tips for that yeah I think when it comes to growth and starting out now, because there's so many more, I feel as though creators Mm -hmm. and artists and people who want to have a platform, it's become a lot more difficult. So I think consistency and not being afraid to put yourself out there, Mm -hmm. kind of like what you were mentioning, because there's so many of us now that if you're just starting and posting maybe once a month or once every couple of weeks or a week or so your content's gonna get lost mm-hmm. throughout the whole universe because there's so many of, so many of us now and I think that's why if you can be your authentic self and stand out because if you're trying to be somebody else then you're not going to get anywhere and I think that's the m- thing I learned a lot with music is I have to separate myself as an artist mm-hmm. and with acting as well you have to make your own choices because if you're trying to be like anybody else there already is that person absolutely so people are not going to want to see that if They've already seen that, you know, they want to see something new. And I think a lot of people are scared to put themselves out there because of hate or rejection or failure. But I feel like if you keep going with something and you're passionate about it over time, it will absolutely. Develop. And re- rejection is redirection. I will Definitely. say that till the day that I die. Um, so you started social media, mm-hmm. you did all that, but you've done so much more. Like sure, it, it yeah. is truly wild to me that you're 19 and I... I I did a deep dive on you and I was like, this girl has done so much. So now you're an actor. You um, played the voice of Megan on the (laughs) horror film, which I'm a huge horror. Love it. So I I did not see it, but now you bet. I'm like, I know that girl. So you, you do voiceover work. You're now singing. Your music videos have millions of views. Like it is in, you're so talented. So when did all that come? Like, so that like, came before social media. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I moved out to Los Angeles for acting. Okay. And I started in theater when I was young in Minnesota. And that's how I developed my love for acting. I've always loved music my entire life because of my mom. And it's just something that we've always, I think, embraced and loved in our household since I was young. So that's always been in my life. But acting was introduced through musical theater. And when we moved out to LA, that's when we started doing the apartment garage covers because my mom... And I realized that social media was becoming important. And we're very lucky to have hopped on it, I feel like, a little bit early. But so many of my friends at the time we encouraged to hop on too were like, you guys, like, I think this is going to be something pretty big. Mm -hmm. And so it obviously took a very long time, but we stayed consistent with it. And, you know, when it came to acting and everything else, when I wasn't working on a project or wasn't working on my music, I would focus on social media. So my family and I present myself kind of like a stool. I have Mm -hmm. three legs. I have my acting leg, my music leg, and my social media leg. And whatever one I'm not working on, we're working on the other. That is a great analogy. (laughs) I'm like, wow. Thanks to my dad. (laughs) Yes, 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 mom and dad. I absolutely love that. Okay, now here's a very hard question. Sure. If you could only pick one leg... For the rest of life, what would you choose? I'm, that Literally, my head's exploding for you right now, but... See, that's so difficult for me because everybody asks that question and I I don't think I could personally choose one. Okay. I do think I'm most passionate about music and acting because they're 
more on the art and I've never been one to have a desire to be famous Mm -hmm. that's never been my goal nor been like what I want to do it's I'm passionate about the craft and what I love to do but I'm grateful for anybody that supports me and that allows me to do that craft Mm -hmm. so I think I don't think I can choose between the two because I love them both so much um, okay, here's another another follow up question for you. Sure. Like, totally on another tangent. If you did a karaoke song, what's your go to karaoke song? For the longest time, it was "Girl on Fire" by Alicia Keys. See, and I'm over here like, what's it like to be able to sing? Mine's like one two <laughs> step because it's mainly talking. I love it. I love it though. Okay. I think karaoke is meant to be fun. Yeah, "Girl on Fire," amazing. That was like my go to. My <laughs> my friends and I used to go to this Mexican restaurant in Los Angeles. I think it was every Thursday to do like karaoke. I think I probably went for the chips and salsa over yeah. everything. Wait, what restaurant? I used to live in LA. Uh, what was it called? Mom, do you remember what it was called? Los Amigos. Oh, Los Amigos. Okay. Have so to like lo- this little colorful, cute little thing in Burbank. I wonder if I've been there. So I mean, I can't sing. And the thought, I have to have like a couple drinks in me for me to even consider <laughs> going up for karaoke because... My voice will um, shatter glass. Truly, I have no musical gifts. So I give you so much credit. But with all of this, you've, you know, singing all of that, I can imagine you've acquired a lot of fans. Have you ever had like a weird fan interaction? You know, I don't think I've ever had anything too weird. I think I've had a few times where I felt like, ooh, maybe they know a little bit too much about me. Right. But... Honestly, I think everybody has been very lovely and I've connected with a lot of people. There's this app called Cameo. Yes. And it's been cool because some of the people that I've met on that app that have booked me to do like a birthday message Mm -hmm. or just to say hello, I've actually got the chance to meet in real life through tour. And it's so cool to be able to see them face to face Mm -hmm. when you've like communicated with them. So I don't think I've ever had a weird experience. I think I've just, it's been like a realization like, oh my goodness, like, I'm meeting you and like, you know, who I, I feel am. like I know who you yeah. are. And I feel like with social media, we watch so many of these people and we feel like we know who they are, oh, girl, mm-hmm. which is so easy, like to think that. And I watched so many different people and I'm like, I feel like I know you, but I don't. But I feel like I do. It's like the, the blessing and the curse that is social media, because mm. yeah, people do feel like you, they know you. Um, do you ever wish because sometimes I I love my job. I love calling myself an influencer, showing up, Mm. letting people into my life, which I share way too much on the internet. But sometimes I'm like, I wish I just didn't have any eyes on me. Like, I just want a break. Do you ever get to that point where you're just like, I'm keeping up with TikTok and YouTube and all this. And like, I, I just need a break. You know, I think it can be stressful at times. But when it comes to the job and the passion and the creative, I don't think that's what's difficult for me. I think it's trusting people and their intentions. Mm. I feel as though is the most difficult thing. Okay. Have you ever like had someone where you felt like was using you for all of this that you've acquired? Unfortunately, several times. Really? And yes. was that with like friends, I'm assuming? Um, it's been with friends and relationships. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I can only imagine, I, look, I grew up when you're, also, by the way, we're both May babies. I saw that. <gasps> happy, happy belated. I'm May 13th. Oh my gosh. Well, happy belated yeah. to you. You're, you're closer. May 5th, May 13th, Taurus babies. Love that. But so you're born in, when I saw the word or the 2004, I was like, oh my God, I'm literally so old. I'm ancient. Um, no. I, was nine, I was 94, but like I grew up, no social media. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I got Instagram in college. Mm. So really my whole high school, I, I was able to go through my awkward phase where I had no eyebrows and side bangs and scrunched hair and gel <laughs> and black eyeliner. And I wore sparkly Uggs and I was just like, not the cutest thing. And luckily it was not documented. Um, so m- my friends, like what well, we would have petty arguments about like our top eight on MySpace, like that was the extent of it. But now with social media, you guys have influencers that are starting from age 13 and like mm. you like YouTube friends and all that so has it been difficult for you I don't, to kind of just grow like do you ever feel like you get to be a normal teenager essentially no really no would you change it though no really okay I've been given the opportunity like my parents have always been do you want to go to high school do you want to go to college 
do you want to do those things? Because if you do, we want you to do that. Mm -hmm. My parents wanted me to do that. And I'm the one who said no. Okay. Because it's, it's just not for me. Like, I know this is what I was meant to do. And this is what I love to do. And it's difficult, yes, but I would not have it any other way. But a lot of, it, it's a blessing and a curse. There's mm-hmm. pros and cons to it all. And I think, I mean, some of my friends that are in the social media space do go to college and do go to regular high school, uh, but they don't really do acting or music or anything like that. Okay. So I think maybe that makes it a tad easier, maybe. With your friends in social media, does it, is, does it get competitive at all? I'm not a competitive person. Okay. So for me, it does not have I had people be competitive with me. Yes. Uh, and I'm not trying to play victim card here. Um, but I think when it comes to friendship, it's important to have balance. Mm-hmm. That's why I have friends that are not in the industry and friends who are in the industry. But it's also, it's also tricky because, you know, do you bring the people that are not in the industry onto the platform? Do you not? But I've also realized that the friends that I have now and that I've found love me for who I Mm -hmm. am versus love me for the platform that I do have. And I think for a while now, or I guess for a while, it was difficult to know who in my life wanted to get to know me for me. Right. And who wanted to be on the platform. And I I really don't have like that big of a platform compared to, I guess, a lot, a lot of people. Right. I mean, there's like, it's so the social media space is truly wild. Like there's just so many different levels of it. But I think it only takes time to figure out people's intentions. Absolutely. But it's it's scary. And I think I've built walls, like walls up a little bit sometimes, but I think quality over quantity. I yes. say that with. Yes, I'd rather have four quarters than 100 pennies is what I always say. Yeah. So that applies to friends, to everything, mm-hmm. to even to followers, which I don't know if you can relate to this, but like I'll post something and mm. I'll be so excited about it. I think it's amazing. And then unfortunately, like I'll go to look at my analytics because that's available for us to look at, unfortunately, mm. at all hours of the day. Mm. And those analytics affect my income and all that. And so I'm checking it. And I'll notice, oh my God, I lost 500 followers in one day. And it's like, then it, it kind of gets in your head of, okay, what am I doing? <laughs> what did I do wrong? What, what upset someone so much about what I said, what I wore, what I did to where they, they actually clicked the unfollow button. So do you ever get to that point where you're like kind of questioning everything? I do. But then I also realize if people don't want to support me, then I'm not going to force them to, or mm-hmm. I'm not going to. I think the most important thing is being yourself. And if people don't like you for who you are, just like how you are in your regular life, then that's okay. And that's how you see it. But it is difficult because it is a a part of our job and Mm -hmm. it is nerve wracking. But I also feel like sometimes when it comes to like losing followers, it could be people that no longer have accounts. So, you know, it's Ah. something that gets into your head where it could be like, oh my gosh, these people didn't like that I showed my stomach or like, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. But it could just be as simple as, that user is not active anymore or it was you know it doesn't have to be as dramatic as oh my gosh they hate me (laughs) 19 year olds and spitting facts here I am like 29 and the most dramatic human I literally ever my mom's (laughs) like shut up right now I'm like mom I'm going through it anyways I'm gonna what would Jenna do next time I'm like okay what would Jenna do right now but okay we're gonna we're gonna take a little turn real quick because I want to talk about dating because Oof. I can only imagine <laughs> how when you're 19 you're growing up your life's kind of been on camera for everyone to see I know for me as dating it, it can often be difficult because mm-hmm. and and these days you can google people before you meet them they they essentially know everything before ever meeting you yeah. so how's dating been like I mean you're only 19 so like no rush but what's that been like for you it's definitely been tricky mm-hmm. I have really only been in what people call situationships. Ah, situationships. Love Uh, them, hate them. Yeah, (laughs) I think I hate them more than anything. (laughs) I'm the type of person that if I would find somebody and, you know, they would treat me, we would both treat each other the way we deserve to be treated Mm -hmm. and it's the right person, I would stick with them. Yeah. I'm not somebody who wants to play the field or do anything like that. Um, So I think that's what's been tricky for me. And I'm the type of person, like, if I find somebody and I'm like, yeah, I'll commit to you. I'll be loyal to you. I'll never do, you know, I I never hurt you. Um, And I think a lot of my generation loves 
situationships because they get to do everything that you get to do in a relationship without the label. I don't support situationships. I'm just going to throw that out there. But I'm like, I, I'm like you. Like, look, I'm going to commit to someone. I, I want the label or else I'm like, I'm wasting my time. You yeah, know? Yeah. It's like I, we're busy gals. Yeah, for sure. And I also think I've allowed myself to get into some of these situations, okay. though. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, he never committed to me. It's all his fault because I allowed myself to be there. Um, and I would keep it going longer than being strong and like, hey, we've been, I guess, dating for three months now. I'm ready to put a label on it. Mm. Instead, I would just kind of wait and give excuses to why they're not doing it because I saw the better side of them in that way. Then I'm like, oh, yeah, he's just waiting because I'm the type of person that likes people that never live where I live. Mm. I, I am a long distance lady. Really? Always. Yeah. I've, never, I've never dated. I've, I guess I've been on two dates with guys in California, but every well, you're person not, that you're I not have. Missing anything. Trust <laughs> every, me. every person that I've had like a more, I guess, serious relationship with has not lived in the state. Um, and I, I don't really know why. It's just my luck. I guess my friends call it my ick because I can't find somebody where I really? live. Really? Yeah. Um, it's just, I don't know why. <laughs> so with these long distance relationships, situationships, whatever, how do you find time to see them? Do you, are you flying in and out or is it more like, like virtual? So it's interesting because most of the guys that I've, I'm not, mo- I haven't really, I guess I've talked to, okay, one for three years, the other for six months. Okay, okay. But yeah. like three years long distance is freaking hard. Yeah, I, it was off and on. It was... Okay, was this a situationship? Yeah, both of them were. I, I mean, I've only been in situationships. That's what I'm saying. I get myself in these situations. You're too cute. You are too <laughs> cute and such a catch to ever be in a situationship ever Thank again. Thank you. Well, I've established rules for myself now. Yes, okay. Because I've gotten myself just heartbroken every time. Okay. Um, and I've established rules for myself so it will not happen again. What are those rules? DTR, which means determine the relationship in three months. So if it's been three months and they haven't asked to, you know, for me to be their girlfriend, I'll leave. No matter what, no matter how much I like them, no matter how much, that's what I'm establishing for myself because if not, I'm just going to keep getting myself into these situationships and I'm going to keep getting myself hurt and I'm done with that. So that's what I'm doing. So that's one of them. Okay. Uh, The other thing is just like catching red flags really early. Mm. I'm really good at giving people excuses because (sighs) I, I love to give people excuses. I'm like, oh, they're busy. It's okay. Um, You believe in the best in people. We're going to say, we're going to phrase it that way. Yeah. So if I see a red flag or something that rubs me the wrong way, I'm going to, going to run, get out of there there. early. So I think those are like my two that I'm like, okay. DTR. DTR. Okay. Yeah. Legit. I'm taking that one with me. I mean, not, I haven't been in that situation in quite a, some time, but that's Good. so smart because I feel like the longer you wait, mm-hmm. if it's not being determined, you're wasting your time, right? Yeah. It, it, it's, De- it's the truth. Determine the relationship. Well, and they can just leave without technically having to break up with you because in their eyes, you were... You were never anything. You were never girlfriend, boyfriend, even though you did all the things. I right. mean, most of the things. Like there's, there's, there's a lot of, gr- there's a lot of gray area, and with that, we don't. We, yeah. I want black and white over here. And I'm like, I don't have time for that, and I'm like, I also think another thing too is if anybody's ever too busy for you, that's a red flag. I think you're never too busy for somebody that you care about, and if you care about somebody, you prioritize them. And if they can't do the same for you, then they don't deserve you. Amen. What's the song, If He Wanted To, He Would? Yeah, that's Kylie Morgan. I love her. Have you done a cover of that song? If um, not, can I re- no, I have not. Okay, I'm going to request that one. That's a, that's a Morgan Willette request from, <laughs> from Jenna. You would crush that. But no, Thank that's you. literally that's what I always try and remember because it's true. If they wanted to, they would. Like, true. you can make the time. I used to make the most excuses of, like, why someone can't text you. Texting someone Mm. requires your thumbs to move. And it takes less than two seconds. It takes less than two seconds. So if you can check an email, if you can scroll your phone, you can take the time to text someone. Mm. So like ladies, if you're out there and you're listening and you're like, oh my God, well, he's busy. He, he's not texting me back. No, no, no. If he wanted to, he would. Mm -hmm. And he just simply doesn't want to. So like. Something that I'd recommend to you is if you're sending something to somebody, use voice messages. mm. And. You can pretty see, you can see how quickly they open it. It's very, it's very, very comedic. (laughs) And you'll see how long it takes for them to actually respond. So they'll open it right away and they'll wait like a couple hours. And then you'll see, and you're like, oh, well, you open that right away. You're just, 
you're just purposely waiting. See, and I'm I'm also someone, and I don't know if you agree or disagree with this. Like, I I can't do the games. Like, I I hate the games, but part of me is like, do I need to start playing them because I've been. St- just no but I'm like I don't think I do because but still sometimes it makes you feel like you want to play them when they're playing them because it's just so frustrating absolutely I totally get that but I'm also in you probably if I don't respond the second I get something I forget like I Mm -hmm. I will move on I will respond two weeks later and by that time it's totally already over so like my friend's like, oh my gosh, you need to wait three hours and 57 minutes to respond to him. They I'm waited like, two hours. I'm going to wait yeah, two so hours. Yeah, so then you have to double it. And I'm like, oh my God, I simply cannot. It's so much work. It's so a lot of work. I love I love that you said that, DTR. I will never forget that. <laughs> so I want to I wanna quickly touch on the situation shift that you had. Mm-hmm. It was kind of in the public eye? No, three years was not. Three years not. No. But was there the six months one more I in mean, the public eye? It's not something that I feel like I needed to publicly publicize like, address okay because I'm like one of those types of people that even if it didn't end the way I wanted it to I'd never put them in a bad light or even right. if they did something that wasn't something that I was really proud of them for I still would never put them in the bad light because I don't think it's worth to tarnish somebody's name or ruin somebody's career over something that they did to me I I feel as though if you love and care for somebody you will always protect them no matter what they did to you amen to that I mean unless it's something super severe and drastic of course um, but if it's something more minor and teenage e that will eventually blow off later on right. I feel I'm a girl of forgiveness so I don't I just forgive uh, I don't forget but we need more people like Jenna in this world. <laughs> I just like, feel like it can get very messy and I don't think if you love and care for somebody you always want to protect them no matter what and right you'll wish nothing but the best for them but it doesn't mean they get to have access to your life anymore amen well and there's also with social media there's a fine line between spilling tea and also like telling that you know like you you want to tell your story yeah. but you also don't want to spill tea so when like the situation ship ended like did you publicly say it or are you just someone who just like out of sight out of mind you move on no, I kind of just, I just kind of move forward. Of course, if people were to ask me about it, I'd be direct about it. But I'd like, selfishly, I'd like my platform to be about me. Oh, selfishly. Jenna Davis spitting some truth. <laughs> yes, you make that platform about you. Um, okay, well, what is next for you? Um, you're you're crushing it with acting, Thank singing. You. I think Courtney mentioned you just recorded a song. Is that correct? Yeah, recording tomorrow. Okay, amazing. Yeah. So what? that's the next project for you? That's the next one, yeah. Can you spill any tea about that? Oh, I'm very thrilled about it. And the people behind it, I think, are truly masterminds and brilliant people. And I'm very, very thrilled about it. I can't say too, too much about it. But I've been out here for a little bit. I got myself an apartment and I've been back and forth between here and L.A. And I'm very excited in the music department. There's a lot of things happening for my country music career, which I'm very happy about. And then with acting, it's I have a few things, but of course it's. The, the classic, I can't tell you anything yet until it happens. Um, but there are a few things there that I'm very excited about. So fun. So with acting, I'm, I'm just curious. So sure. you, you played the voice of Megan yes. in the horror film. Mm-hmm. Are you a horror like fan? So prior to the film, I was really afraid of horror. Really? Uh, yeah. But when I was working on the project and after, I've actually found it to be so entertaining. And I've kind of dove into the universe a bit more and now I'm like okay someone needs to cast me as another villain or another person who gets like killed or something like I I really would like to be like killed in like, like a something. scream queen yeah like a scream queen something okay. yeah the next film that I am in is like a horror comedy called oh. Lisa Frankenstein that I'm super excited about that I filmed in New Orleans last summer amazing and when does that come out it comes I don't think we know yet okay but I'm very excited about it and It's been fun to dive into horror a bit more because primarily all my roles before Megan were really comedical and comedy and Disney and big and fun, which I had a lot of fun. And of course, I'd do that again tomorrow if if I was offered the opportunity. But I think it's been fun to experiment with other genres because it challenges you as an actress and like in other ways because it's so far different from comedy. For sure. Favorite horror film? I mean, I'm going to be biased and say Megan. Can't pick Megan. Any- <laughs> God. But, but sorry, sorry, sorry. Beside Megan, favorite horror film. Okay, I'm just going to say the one that scared me to death the most. Uh, there was this one film. I don't recall the name because I was... What? I'm trying to recall the name, but it was a film that was completely silent. It's not a oh, plot... Oh, um... 
I feel like I know what you're talking about. It was recent-ish. Recent-ish. It was not a quiet place, but it's a different one. Oh, wait. Okay, now I'm thinking of a quiet place. And this girl was in a cabin, and the film had no audio. And I always thought, you know, music was a big contributor to everything, which I definitely think it is. But this film scared me to pieces and it had no doubt it was just the most insane thing and I think it really made me look back and think like oh my goodness like there's so much more that goes into all of this and okay, it I'm scared me to, to death I don't remember it's on the tip of my tongue but it's not a quiet place because every time I mention this film okay, I talk yeah, about it a lot um it's like it's a quiet place and I'm like no it's not that one but she's like in the woods in a cabin and my one of my best friends Emily convinced me to watch it with her we we're having a sleepover one night she's like we have to watch this movie and I was like okay And I watched it and I was terrified and I don't even, there was no sound. So I don't even know why I was so scared. Weird. Okay. I'm going to do a deep dive after this. I'm going to figure out what that is Mm -hmm. and I'm going to watch it probably alone and I probably won't sleep. Um, Okay. (laughs) Amazing. Well, anything else you want to add for your fans, for your followers, any, any tidbits I missed? I don't think so. I mean, I'm just happy to be here. It was fun. You're the cutest human (laughs) ever. I'm obsessed with you. Come hang in my in my apartment, set, Thank living you. room, anytime I mean, you want. It's probably looks even more epic at night too, with all the lights. I, it's I, an insane view. I don't know if you can see, but <laughs> we'll give you guys a tour at some point, but. Thank you so much, Jenna, for Thanks joining for me. me. Where can everyone find you on social media? Catch up with all yeah. things, Jenna. Uh, my Instagram is just my name, Jenna Davis. My YouTube is just my name, Jenna Davis. My TikTok is it's Jenna Davis. So that one's a little different. And then I think music, everything else, just search me up on Google and you'll probably find me. <laughs> click, click follow. She's going to, don't forget DTR, all the fun oh, stuff, yeah. new music <laughs> coming out. Amazing. Well, Jenna, thank you so much. Thanks. And yeah, we'll chat soon. Yeah. Absolutely. Bye, guys. Yay. Thanks so much for listening to the Your Internet Best Friend podcast. It's been real. It's been fun. And I will see everyone here next week. In the meantime, do all the podcast things. Like, subscribe. Give me a five-star review if you please. And catch up with me on social media at Morgan Lee Willette. Bye, besties.